Praise the Lord. I'm going to be talking to you. Why? I believe it has to be a pre-tribulation rapture. Praise the Lord. Reason number one. Matthew 24 talks about the two women grinding at the mill. Matthew 24, 41 says, Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. So that means that there was two women grinding at the mill. One was taken and one will be left. That means that there was a Christian there and there was a non-Christian. So if, if it was post-tribulation, where would there be that opportunity for a non-Christian to be working next to a Christian? If the seven years of tribulation are the worst period ever for mankind, for Christians, I don't see how there could be the opportunity for there to be a Christian working next to a non-Christian. If this is worse, going to be worse than the Holocaust, the worst period, worst time ever for mankind, and there's given, I just don't see there being, there being the chance for a Christian to be working next to a non-Christian. Aren't Christians supposed to be getting heavily, heavily persecuted during the seven years of tribulation? If it was post-tribulation, uh, wouldn't that person be uh, trying to kill that Christian in the field instead of working next to them? And also, right next to it, Matthew 24, 40 talks about, Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. So there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. I don't see how, you know, unless, you know, it's talking about, uh, you know, this guy is chasing the other guy trying to kill the Christian. I just, when I read that, I just, when I read that and the verses around it, it just doesn't seem like, um, you know, the, the two men in the field, one is trying to kill the other. It sounds like they're in the field uh, together and one is just suddenly taken and the other is left. So, if it was post-tribulation or mid-tribulation rapture, I don't see how there'd be that opportunity for that non-Christian woman to be working next to a Christian woman in the field. And I also don't see the opportunity for the two men to be in the field together uh, if it was mid- or post-tribulation, for there to be one Christian next to a non-Christian. Um, like that, described like it is. And number two, they were eating and drinking. Matthew 24 as well talks about, here I'll just read it. Matthew 24, 37 through 39. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in, the, for as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the son, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. So it's described just like as in the days of Noah, where they were eating and drinking, and then sudden destruction. If it's post or mid tribulation rapture, especially post tribulation rapture, I don't see how there's going to be the opportunity for people. To be eating and drinking and giving and, and giving in marriage. You know, the book of Revelation talks about during the seven years of tribulation, all people are going to be hiding in the caves. They're going to be seeking death. They're going to be seeking to kill themselves and they won't be able to find it. But here, Jesus is saying that um, the coming of the Son of Man will be just like in the days of Noah when they're eating and drinking and giving themselves into marriage and then sudden, then sudden destruction. If the seven years of tribulation, especially the post-tribulation rapture, if that's the case, I don't see how they would be eating and drinking, giving, them, giving themselves into marriage. 
So, the whole idea is sudden destruction. If it's post tribulation, it's not sudden destruction. The destruction's already been going on. The worst time for human history. All right. Number three. No man knows the day or hour. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 24, 44, and 36. For this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think you will. And then Matthew 24, 36 says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So, if no one knows, Jesus says that no one will know. If it's mid-tribulation, we would know the time. There's verses that give us um, times when things will happen. For instance, Daniel 9.27 tells us what's going to happen in the middle of the tribulation. Daniel 9.27, you could read it yourself, but yeah. Okay, we'll just read it as well here, but read it yourself as well. And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week, but in the middle of the week he will put a stop to, this, to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate even until a complete destruction. One that is dis decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. So there's verses that give us pinpoints for activities that will go be going on during the tribulation. If it's mid or post, we would know when the rapture would be. But Jesus says that we won't know the time. We won't know the day and hour. But if it was mid or post, we would. There's also other verses that describe how... Yeah, there's other verses that describe the... the the time between the, uh, the start of the tribulation and the mid, and the, then the mid to the last. There's other verses that talk about pinpoints to where how we would know what part of the tribulation we are in. But we don't know when it will start. We don't know the exact day and hour when it will start. So... From my understanding, from my own studying, and I just want to let you guys know, I didn't get this stuff from watching some video or reading a bunch of books. This really came from my own studying, just reading the Bible. You know, I've heard some people say, oh, you know, if you just read the Bible, you won't get uh, pre-tribulation rapture. Well, I did. Well, I just so happened to, uh, that, that's what I happened to believe just from reading the Bible. I'm not watching, you know, obsessively just a bunch of videos about pre-trib and I just, I'm just forced to think that way. No, this is from my own studying the Word of God. So, just wanted to let you guys know that. So, again, I'll say it again. Jesus says, you know, we don't know the hour nor the day. But if it's a mid or post, we would, due to uh, other scriptures. And then fourth, the restrainer. The restrainer is talked about in Second Th Second Thessalonians chapter two. Um, if you want to get right to it, you can start at verse six, moving down. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse six, moving down. But you know, it, it, it's good to read the verses before. Let's just read. It all in context. Second Thessalonians two, chapter one. Go to it yourself and uh, read along. Pause the video, read it yourself, then listen to me read it. Let's read it here. All right. Second Thessalonians two, one. Let's go to all the way to verse twelve. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. 
Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the stone of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called god or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false, in order that, in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. Okay, so let's read 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 through 7 again. And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Okay, when I just read this, when I just naturally read what's in 2 Thessalonians, it seems to me like the restrainer is the Holy Spirit slash the church. When I read it, I just... I, I don't feel like it's the government. I don't feel like it's this, that, or the other. I feel like it's the Holy Spirit and the church. I feel like it's the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ. Um, that's the restrainer. When I just read it how it is, again, I'm, I'm not going just based off a bunch of books, videos I've watched. This is just for my own studying. Okay, when I just naturally read it, that's just how, what I feel. So, I believe, and, and if it is, if the restrainer is the Holy Spirit and the church, then it's definitely, you know, it's pointing to pre-tribulation rapture because it talks about it being taken out of the way and then after it's taken out of the way that's when the um, the full working of Satan is able to uh, go through I'm telling you right now um, Satan's not able to do as much you know the kingdom of darkness isn't able to do as much now as it will be when the restrainer is taken out of the way I'm telling you what, I believe that there's going to be monsters coming out of the earth when the restrainer is taken out of the way. Like, kind of like, yeah, like the uh, like the things talked about in Revelation. But also other things. Um, it's, it's exciting. Praise God. Anyways, so those are four reasons, big reasons why I believe it is a pre-tribulation rapture. And, um, you know, a lot of people, they'll say, uh, oh, well, who are we? Who are we to not go through uh, severe tribulation as the other people in other countries? Who are we? Okay. Nowhere does it say uh, we all have to suffer the same level of same degree, same amount of persecution as others. Nowhere does it say we have to all face the exact level, the exact treatment, go through the same exact tortures, punishments, persecutions. Uh, the Bible talks about there being a least and a greater in the kingdom of God. Not everyone is going to get the same rewards in heaven. The thief on the cross is a great example. He didn't have to go through the same exact stuff as 
the other men of God throughout history had to go through in order to make it to heaven. And no, he was not hung on the cross because he was getting persecuted for Jesus. He didn't become, uh, well, I'd say, yeah, he didn't become Christian until after he was put on the cross. So, that's another indicator. Not everyone has to suffer the same amount to make it to heaven. Yes, the Bible says we will all suffer persecution if we desire to live through Jesus Christ, if we desire to live godly, but it doesn't say the same amount. It doesn't say everyone's going to go through the same exact level. Here's some verses where it talks about how we will have to go through tribulation, persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Philippians 1.29 For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Jesus says that we will be hated of all. A servant is not greater than his master. But nowhere does it say we will all go through the same level, the same amount of persecution. Yes, there is a greater and there is a least in the kingdom of God. Some people in heaven will get more treasures than others. There is a greater and there is a least. Luke 7, 28 says this, I say to you among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, yet he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And then also Paul talks about how he, he goes through sufferings more than others in Christ. He go, he, Paul literally talked about in 2 Corinthians how he goes through sufferings um, more than others in Christ. So let's read 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. Are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. I more so, in far more labors, in far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes, Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. Nowhere does Paul say we all have to go through the same stuff he did. Paul is talking about how he, he, he went through um, more than others. Uh, so, amen. We will get according to our deeds. We'll get according to how we suffered, how much we suffered for Christ, what we did for Christ, our deeds for Christ. We'll get according to our deeds in heaven. That's what the book of Revelation talks about. We will get according to our deeds. So not everyone has to go through the same just because they got uh, went through certain persecution in China doesn't mean that if someone has to make it to heaven, they have to go through the same exact stuff. Amen. Revelation 2.23 says this, And I will kill her children with pestilence, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your deeds. And there's also other verses that talk about us, Jesus giving us according to our deeds. Anyways, those are points to why I believe it must be a pre-tribulation rapture. It's not because I'm some wuss trying to avoid the tribulation. It's not because I'm scared, terrified, and I just can't bear to think about being in the tribulation. It's just because... When I read the Bible, that's how I see it. So amen. Praise the Lord. God bless all those who are doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen.